This video is brought to you by my online surf school, The Surfer's Roadmap. Whether it's taking your surfing rapidly from beginner to intermediate in one day, or joining us for surf flow movement sessions to increase your surf mobility, thesurfersroadmap.com is your go-to for all surf progression. Join over 6,000 students smashing their surfing goals via the link in the description below. In this video, we're gonna chat about beginner surf etiquette. When you say etiquette, most people think of the dreaded drop-in scenario, where a surfer takes away from another surfer when it isn't their turn. And although this is important and something we'll cover later, many beginner surfers breach different areas of surf etiquette, those mainly to do with paddling and positioning. The most important lesson here is learning how to paddle so that you remain out of the way of surfers who are riding a wave. Take this common situation where a surfer is coming towards you when you're paddling out. It is a common mistake for inexperienced surfers and even those more experienced to desperately avoid having to duck dive and so paddle out in this direction to the shoulder as the wave passes by. In many circumstances though, this involves you crossing the surfer's line and potentially ruining their ride as you have gone too close to the pocket of the wave, which is where most surfers wanna be. Unless you are completely confident that you can paddle out far enough on the shoulder to be totally out of the riding surfer's way, you should never paddle in that direction. As a general rule, you should actually try to paddle towards the white water in this situation, which is the last place that you would be in the way of a riding surfer. Yes, you'll need to deal with a duck dive or turtle roll and that annoying whitewash, but that's a small price to pay to ensure a safe lineup with lots of fun waves to ride. But what if you don't know for sure if you can safely make it out to the shoulder without getting in the surfer's way? What if you notice the surfer at the last minute and feel as if no matter where you go, you'll be in the surfer's way? This is actually a relatively common situation and there are some guidelines here. Number one, do not ditch your surfboard out from under you. This dramatically increases the surface area that the riding surfer now has to avoid and increases the likelihood of you or them or your boards getting hurt. Number two, do not take on a sideways position in relation to the wave as, again, this increases the space that you are taking up and increases the chance of a collision. The best thing you can do is to paddle in a straight line toward the wave, no matter where you are, or simply sit up on your surfboard and wait for the surfer riding the wave to do the dodging work. If you are certain the surfer hasn't seen you, simply call out in a loud but friendly voice to ensure that they know you are there. No matter what happens here, you may find that some surfers are grumpy with you for having been in the way, but I can 100% guarantee that all surfers have unknowingly put themselves in a position that makes it awkward for other surfers to ride waves. In short, everybody has been in the way at some time. Everybody makes mistakes here because we are dealing with an unpredictable ocean. So it's always good practice to just apologize kindly, smile and move on. The next thing we need to look at is lineup ethics. Whose turn is it to catch the next wave? Do we even take turns in surfing? Well, the answer is yes. And as to whose turn it is, well, it depends who's been waiting the longest in the area where the waves are. To make this clear, let's call this zone here the lineup. We would define this as the spot on the beach where the best waves are and where the most waves are. It's the spot everybody wants to be in to catch the wave before it breaks into white water. In surfing, we generally work with a priority system, which is actually reflected in the world tour competitions that you can watch online. The surfer who has been waiting the longest within the lineup has priority for the next wave that he or she wishes to catch. 
This means that the surfer has first choice of the waves that are coming in. If he or she chooses not to catch a wave, then the priority passes on to the surfer who has been waiting next longest, and so on and so forth. Sometimes, in fact a lot of the time, it can be tricky to keep track of who has been waiting the longest for a wave, and this is why it's really important to communicate in the lineup. If you're interested in a certain wave and another person is paddling for it, make it known that you wish to go with a little yep. If the surfer reacts poorly and continues paddling, it may be that they believe it is their turn to catch a wave. Best practice normally is to just let it go. Obviously, surfers can take advantage of those who are less experienced in this regard. So again, it's really important that you communicate in the lineup. If the surfer who just caught the wave clearly paddles back out and cuts the line, then it might be time to say kindly, hey, I noticed you just caught two waves in a row. Would you mind sharing? It's called the lineup because we ideally want surfers to be lining up for their waves. Nowhere do I see this working better than the wave pool. Surfers line up against the wave machine and those in front take their wave whilst the next person waits out the way and then moves into position to catch the next one. Of course, the ocean is very different and a lot bigger of a playing field. So naturally it becomes a little difficult to define a lineup sometimes, but know this, most surfers are very conscious of that lineup and know very clearly whose turn it is for the next wave. And they also know their relative position in that lineup. And it becomes very hurtful when another surfer tries to cut that line. We would call this snaking. Let's use this example here. This surfer has been waiting the longest for a wave and has been hovering around the pole position waiting for that perfect ride to come through. One of the worst things that another surfer can do, a huge breach in surf etiquette, is to paddle to the inside of this surfer's position and then try to catch the wave that the original surfer wants. Essentially, this new surfer, who we would call the snake, has cut the line, not waited their turn, but placed themselves in a technical position of right of way, being closest to the pocket or being on the inside. This would be quite an insidious example of a snaking, and although not rare exactly, it is a blatant breach of surf etiquette. Sometimes though, someone can unintentionally snake another surfer, and I often find that many beginner and intermediate surfers who are not paying attention to others in the lineup are most guilty of this. Remember that even if a surfer doesn't have top priority, that is, they aren't the surfer out the back having waited the longest, they can still be ahead in the line from you. So it's important that you do not just simply go and sit closer to the pocket in order to technically be in the spot for the next wave. It's generally best to sit a little bit wider and wait for that person to catch their wave before moving ahead. Something to note is that if a surfer paddles intently for a wave but misses it, that is their turn taken, and technically they should move to the back of the line as a result. But this does leave room for some kindness and generosity though. If you'd like to let them have another chance at a wave, go ahead. And of course that leaves me with the last rule, and probably the most important one, don't drop in. A drop-in is when a surfer who isn't closest to the pocket of the wave and doesn't have priority catches a wave that someone else is riding or about to ride. This can sometimes happen by accident and if you are the offending surfer, you should pull off the wave as quickly as possible to let the surfer closest to the pocket continue their ride. Sometimes this can be done maliciously. I often find it's best to either completely ignore the person or simply say something kind like, hey, did you notice me on that wave? A delicate scenario here is when you make the decision that a surfer is too deep on the wave and that they will not be able to surf past a breaking section to get to the pocket. In this instance, you can take the wave. However, you should be very confident that the surfer isn't going to make that section before you do. And always be ready to pull off just in case. The system isn't perfect. People take advantage, people make mistakes. But these guidelines are there to ensure that everybody gets access to wave catching opportunities. If it were a free for all and there were no rules, it would be only the advanced surfers 
catching all the waves because they have the most experience with paddling and positioning and that's not a great situation if you're trying to progress your surfing from beginner level. So smile, have fun, be aware of your surroundings and the lineup and underline all that with be a good person. I'll see you guys out there. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, let me know in the comments what are you struggling with with your surfing because that guides our content here. You can also join me on Instagram at kalesbroccoli or check out thesurfersroadmap.com uh, for all our retreats and events that we conduct around the world. Best case uh, is to jump on Instagram there or to join my mailing list via kalebrock.com. I'll see you guys soon. Yep.